Hey everybody, this is Kyle from Neat and Kyle. Um, standing in front of our brand new Coachman 1942 RB. It's still going to take me a while to say that without thinking about it. Um, we just picked it up from Pennsylvania on Friday. Today's Sunday, um, March 14th, I believe it is. We just picked it up. Um, and we used it Friday night at a campground in Pennsylvania because we wanted to make sure all the mechanicals worked before we got too far away from the dealership. Um, it's still the middle of March in New England. It's about 45 degrees here right now, but it's supposed to get very cold the next couple of nights. I'm going to film a full winterization on this unit so you know where all of the valves are. Um, for this particular unit, it's a Coachman 1942 RB. The same process applies to virtually every other unit, um, but if you have this particular model, you won't have to guess at where things are. I'll show you exactly where they are. So we arrived back here at the storage facility last night, kind of late in the dark. I did two things, three things very quickly. I'm going to walk you through what I did so you understand that's kind of the first step of this process. And then we'll go inside to, to complete the process. But let me show you what I did outside last night. And then we will go inside and we'll talk about what we All did inside. Right. So one of the things we wanted to test uh, was to make sure that the freshwater storage tank and the inside water pump was working fine. Because we did not buy this unit for glamping. We bought it mostly for boondocking out west. Um, we're getting close to retirement. We're getting ready to take this thing out west for six months at a time and be on BLM land for weeks at a time before we come back in. There's a whole bunch of modifications we're going to need to make to this to get us ready for that type of boondocking, but we wanted to make sure that the water tank and the indoor, or I'm sorry, the, the onboard water pump was working. So I put about 15 or 20 gallons in the freshwater tank, which is right here. This is the, the freshwater fill. So last night, um, before we left, I pulled the drain outlet. So if you, you see this little label here, right underneath here, all the way down underneath, I don't know whether you can see it, it's a white handle. I had to pull that and all of the water from the, from the water tank drained out. So that was step one. Step two is back over here. We're going to go around the slide out. This is where all the hookups are. Obviously I went to a dump station before we um, before we got here and I dumped the um, gray water and the black water tanks. But one of the things I had to do back here, if you notice this little um, this little label, drain outlet, there is a hot water and a cold water drain plug. You got to go all the way down. There's a hot water and a cold water drain plug under here. Um, probably difficult to see. Those have been open all night. I have to close those now in order to complete the winterization process. So I'm just going to feel around because I can't see it. And I'm going to turn these two plugs till they're both closed. Um, yep, there was one, here's the other. All right, so they are both now closed. Actually, that is not true. I cannot do that now. These have to be opened, and I'll tell you why. Because I did not open up the faucets, so water did drain out of this overnight, but when I open up the faucets, I wouldn't be surprised if some water drains out. So we want to get as much of the water out as possible before we put the antifreeze in. Why don't you stay here, camera person, and I'm going to go open up the drain plugs, and you can tell me if any water's come out. All right. All right, going into the unit now. And I'm going to turn on the faucets. Yep. All right. So now that we have relieved all the pressure in the system, 
there should be a little bit of water that drained out. So again, this is to get as much of the fresh water out of the system, both the pressurized system for city hookups, as well as the freshwater tank for boondocking or dry camping. So that looks like it's done now. I'm going to go ahead and close those valves now. Go back under here. And we got one. And we got two. All right. Um, one more thing that we did. So this is the hot water heater. Uh, in this unit, it's at the back of the RV. What I did last night, two things. Now, you cannot do this with hot water. When the, when the heater's hot or you will burn yourself. This little relief valve here, you have to lift it up and release the pressure and what's going to happen is some hot water is going to squirt out of here and then you put it back down and then you take this plastic plug which sits right here and you unscrew it you have to use a socket wrench to unscrew it and put it aside and then the six gallons of water that's in this unit will drain out and it just kind of runs down here and, and runs out and that's fine that's that's just how it's designed but you have to get that water out of your hot water heater because you're not going to put antifreeze in the heater. And I'll show you how we bypass the heater entirely when we put the antifreeze into the lines. So I usually just keep this plug in here. It's sealed. It's not going to it's not going to go anywhere even if you're traveling and hook it back up. I, this is always this always bothers me. Every hot water heater is like this. It never fits on properly, but it's it's good the plugs never going to come out of there this by the way is the refrigerator whole different video um we all can, right, we are can we talk good? about that another time we're good all right so we're inside it's not much warmer in here um temperature's starting to go down but it should be a lot quieter no wind no and very little traffic noise so there's a couple things we have to do in here before we put the antifreeze in um <clears throat> This is Walmart antifreeze. It's good to negative 50 degrees. It's relatively inexpensive. This is obviously the name brand. It's good to negative 100 degrees. Since it's March and it won't get too, too cold until we start using this in April when it would be safe to, to leave water in it because from, from the point of your last frost, all the way up to fro first frost, you usually would just leave the water in it and, and use the camper. Um, if, if we can do, I've never done this unit before, it's a brand new unit for us, so I don't know if it's going to take two gallons or three gallons or even more. Um, we're going to max it out at three gallons because we only have three gallons. <laughs> but I'm going to use the cheap stuff first and keep this um, a lower temperature antifreeze for the colder months if, if we can use if we can avoid using it um, in this system like I said I don't know how many feet of piping are in here I don't know how much water uh, how much of this antifreeze is going to get used up we'll go through all of that as we start to get the panels off um, all right so, so I've got the panels off or the screws off the panel and and coachman if you're listening guys we've only used this one night but we've got a decent product here this looks like a really nice camper but you go so cheap on this stuff for as long as a person owns a camper they're going to have to take these panels off in the spring and in the fall now obviously that's not true if they live in florida and they use it year round so that's that's obviously the qualifier but could you please put a little bit more quality into it i mean we're spending tens of thousands of dollars for these things and, and look at this panel. Look at the way it's put together. So I only had to take off three screws because this screw here is just floating. So we're talking about probably eighth inch Luan plywood screwed in with no attachments. How difficult would it have been for you guys to build a small plastic clip or some type of magnetic catch so that this would stay in place and you could easily remove it without this this cheap stuff here. So I'm sorry, that's my little little rant for, for the day. 
Um, so I think probably it would make sense, camera person, for you to give me the camera and I will show these two valves. So what we see here, try to get centered. What we see here, this is the first valve. It's right, right here. And this is the second valve. <laughs> Let me get up in here. This is the second valve. Um, what we have to do is we have to turn those valves so that when water comes in from this section, it doesn't go into the pump, but is bypassed by this line. You can barely see it. I hope you can see it, this line here. And, and the hot water pipes, the water that would normally come out of the hot water heater is actually fed directly in this loop from the cold water feed. So I'm just going to flip these valves so that they're in line with in line with the line that feeds the loop back into the hot water system and completely bypasses the hot water heater. And by the way, this heater is electric as well as gas. Um, in 30 degree temperature, the electric heater didn't do very good for us on Friday night, on our first night. We'll, um, we'll post some updates and, and we'll let you know what happens in warmer weather, whether we can use the electric heater when, when we are hooked up to, you know, to a regular system. I just have this other valve to flip and I don't know whether you'll be able to see it. Let me see if I can get in there. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to try to sneak in and get it. All right, so we are now bypassed. So when the antifreeze that comes in through this line here, um, through this, this line here, will not go into the hot water heater. It'll go directly into this loop and come out through the hot water line. So the antifreeze will, will flow through this line. And, and that's how we, we set... This is the setting to add the antifreeze. At the end of the spring, when you want to start using the unit, you flip them back the other way so that the cold water flows into the hot water heater and hot water flows out of the hot water heater. And it's kind of like the old, um, the old rule for pumps, in the bottom, out the top. Um, that's kind of the way, the way almost all mechanical systems work. You always have the input going in from the bottom and the output going out from the top. So rather than a, put these, this panel back, I'm just going to tape these four screws to this panel. Whoops. I'm just going to tape the four screws to this panel and just lay it in here because we are not going to use the tamper again until we dewinterize it in a month or two. Um, so, so more to come on that. We have one more thing to do, and then we can start siphoning that antifreeze uh, directly into the system all right and we'll show you how that works. Um, so timing is everything I just went out to get this light um, to to illuminate the bottom cabinet so we can make the final um, adjustment to the valves and then we can start pumping the antifreeze into the system and I looked up and there's snow flurries coming down so we've got to get this antifreeze in today or we could risk burst pipes so I'm just gonna put the light in the cabinet here um, so I can show you what's going on. Sorry you had to see that, guys. It's getting old. So we have a hose that comes out. This is actually going to siphon the antifreeze um, into the system. So we're going to stick this hose directly into our antifreeze. Uh, it looks like we have to take this valve off for, or this plug off first. So we'll do that. Um, but before we do that, um, let's see if we can bring this in. Um, you see the water pump is here. There is a valve all the way over there. I don't know whether you can see it. Hold on. Uh, there's a valve over there that we have to turn in order to um, get the water to be brought in from the antifreeze reservoir, which is just a bottle, um, instead of the freshwater tank. So I'm going to make that um, move that valve now, and then um, and then we'll be able to back out of this cabinet and complete the work. So give me a second here. Put the light in here. Hopefully that'll help.
couple of mini things. And then I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just slide over so I can see. You guys, I don't know, some of you may know I'm like six, seven, so this isn't the easiest thing for me to do. Um, let's see. Can't really see what I'm doing here, so let's find the hose. I may have to not film this. Let's see. Okay, I can see it now. It's over here. So I hope you guys could see that, but I switched the valve <clears throat> so that um, when the water pump comes on, it is not going to pump water out of the hot, out of the water reservoir, but it's going to pump water out of the little siphon hose. So I'm going to back out of here, and then we will pick it up as soon as I get this plug off of the siphon hose, and we have um, the the pump ready to pump antifreeze in. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that daughter <laughs> so this plug has to come off so I'm just going to take it off I should have used like a socket wrench or something but and I believe that's all we have to do I don't know why there's water in there that's terrible so we just have to stick this in here all right, Let me wash that antifreeze, that non-toxic antifreeze off my hand before I grow a third ear or something. All right, so we're going to tell very quickly if this is going to work, simply by turning on the water pump. Yep. So something's still on, obviously. I believe it's the faucet here. Need several gallons. All right, let's come into the bathroom for a second. So I'm pretty sure we want to do the highest um, valve first. So that's going to be the shower. So just getting this off because it's a little cold and rigid. So this valve is the highest, certainly. So we're going to turn on the hot and the cold. And we're going to wait until it becomes completely pink. That looks pretty pink. All right. Um, and as you can see, if you pan over to the... Um, to the um, jug, it's already used most of the first gallon of water. So now we're going to do this sink here. Up, 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 up. That's going to fall. You grab that. If you keep it upright. All right. Just make sure it's at the bottom. All right. And you can see that's pink. And we're pink. So that is all set. Now we have to do the toilet. That is pink. And maybe we are going to get away with just doing one, one gallon. And now we have to do the sink. Pink. And cold. And it's pink. Okay. We did it in one gallon. That's awesome. And here we are. So um, that's basically the process. Now if you had more sinks an outdoor shower or some other, um, you know, something else, obviously you would have to continue uh, this process until every single faucet that you had um, had pink liquid coming out of it. But again, we are in the middle of March, not expecting weeks of sub-zero freezing, sub-zero Fahrenheit freezing temperature um, here in, here in uh, Connecticut. But um, if 
If that were the case, maybe I would be inclined to run a lot more liquid through the system, maybe a couple gallons, maybe three gallons, just to make sure that all of the little pockets of water. Um, but it, since we have pink coming out of every single one of the faucets, I think we're probably okay. I'm not going to open up the second um, the second um, cheap gallon. Just to show you, it's used pretty much the entire gallon of water. Um, there is one other fixture that I just remember. There's an outdoor fixture that would allow you to spray out your hose if you your um, black water tank if you didn't have um, if you didn't have any um, pressured water to spray it out. It's it's down near the the clean out section. I'm gonna not bother that because we didn't use it. So I think we're probably gonna be okay. I'm just gonna replace this. Um, plug in the siphon hose and leave everything disconnected. Uh, like I said, I want to tape the screws to the panel over there. All right. So I think that's about it for this episode. Um, sorry, things were a little choppy, especially in these small, tight places. Um, definitely not meant for a guy that's six seven. And, and by the way, if you are taller, um, this particular line, uh, we're not we're not affiliates. Nobody's paying us to do this, and I, I'll tell you the good and the bad. Um, I'm sure we'll find more good and more bad in this unit, but this is a Coachman um, Spirit 1942RB for rear bath. I am 6'7", so I've got, what, about six inches in the middle? Around that, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, when you get to the slide out, which isn't fully out, I'm going to clearly hit my head, but you don't stand in a slide out, you sit in a slide out. Um, the bed is a full queen size bed, so that's 80 inches long. If you're tall, that's important because most RVs only give you like a 74 inch bed. Um, it's They call it a queen, but it ain't no queen. Um, so so this is a camper for, for people that are vertically enhanced. Uh, the only complaint that I really have is is the tightness of the panels, but you only go into the panels once or twice a year, and um, the bathroom is obviously a, a little bit of tight, a little bit tight. But how often, how much time do you really spend in your bathroom? So um, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching this. If you have any questions about this particular model or winterizing in general. Um, either leave a comment below, shoot me an email through, you know, through YouTube, and I will be happy to answer the question as best I can. All right, so I guess that's it for Nate and Kyle. There's without no need <laughs> without Nate, but without we've got Kyla and Kyle. We've got Kyle and Kyla. There we go. Kyla and Kyle. That's as much as I like that way together.